Now this is the tying stuff. You got your small hobbles. You just open them up. You do two front legs and two back legs. Then you got your more larger hobbles for a bigger hog. And if you don't have this, then just plain old rope will work. Can y'all tell we've used that quite a bit? Even with hobbles, we still use rope a lot. The hobbles is good if you got a hole you're gonna leave tied up a long time in the woods, or if you gotta haul it somewhere, because it don't cut the blood circulation off. And the rope, I mean it, I've used rope ever since I was a kid, so that's why I stick with the rope. And I mean, you can tie a good size hog up, you stretch your arms out, um, I mean, you can see how long that rope is. Yeah, pretty long. Man sized. And that'll tie, I know, a good 250 pound boar hog up. That right there will. Cheap way to go about it. This is for my catch dog. Everybody likes different things i like a short leash that way it don't get tangled up while you're walking him through the woods or her i like a soft grip on it this is a snap i stuck on there because i prefer it myself but when you get to it it's easy to open you just and that dog comes off there we do not run running catch dogs not that we don't Agree with it. We just don't. We prefer to walk them in. This is my break stick I use. I make it myself. All it is is an axe handle. It got broke this past weekend. I hit it with a sander to smooth it up so there ain't no rough edges. I won't use this one again because it's broke. I'll make a new one, which I'll probably let y'all watch me make one. They're easy to make and they're cheap. You can make two or three out of them with one axe handle. If you can find a boat arc wood axe handle, that's the best thing to use. They don't splinter. This is a homemade cut collar. If you can't afford to buy you a cut collar, this is the cheapest way to go about making it. I made them all the time when I was a kid. All it is is two 18 wheeler straps and they are 17 inches to 18 wheeler straps. These right here are just plain old dog collars and they are 22 and three quarters. 22 and three quarters. And <clears throat> what I did is lay them out from your strap to the first ribbit. It's going to be three inches. Then from your first ribbit, it'll be four inches. And you just run them side by side. If you don't have these big pieces right here, you can drill you a hole in a quarter and it works. But I mean, and always double layer it like that. Because dog safety is the number one thing. And if you don't have it long enough, when you fold it up and it don't cover the dog's complete neck, then you want to go a little longer on your 18 wheel straps because uh, any spot that's left open is a temporary, is a spot, spot that can get hit. 
These are all store bought. Yeah, you can see the difference. I mean, I'm not knocking the store bought. We love them. I love them because of the pink. I'm just picky about what color my dogs are in. But this one has held up just as well as our store bought ones. All right, that's pretty much everything I use. And, uh, I mean, I do use cut vest on my bulldogs. I don't on my bay dogs just because when it's hot outside, a dog overheats real, real easy. And sometimes they run a mile to two miles. I mean, the hog you've seen us catch, we clocked it a mile off through the woods. And... It takes a while to walk a mile. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, right after the bulldog catches, we take the cut vest off of him, let him cool off or her cool off. But uh, that's pretty much all I got. I'll try to get back with you and show you some of the dogs we use. And when I go to the competitions, I usually just bring the cut cut coats. I bring a brake stick for just backup. Just because I don't want to mess their teeth up. And I also bring the box full of stuff because you never know what can happen there. Alright, thank you.